Nityandam, welcome you back to this video. Um, the fuel you use to operate and to live your life matters. This is the topic for today's video. So I welcome you all with my love and respects and the blessings of my Guru, His Divine Holiness, Bhagwan Shri Nityananda Paramashiva. Um, yes, today I wanted to again start, uh, for those who didn't see yesterday's video or uh, Facebook, um, Swamiji is going to initiate and give I'm going to give it, show it a glance again. He's going to give the uh, Atmalinga. He's going to give initiation next week to receive the Atmalinga. So this is what the Atmalinga looks like. It's a 24 karat Spatika Linga crystal. Spatika crystal. Um, and it is basically, Swamiji was saying, that that crystal is the materialization of the frequency of Kailasha. So this crystal is very auspicious to make Shivalingas with it. And once you receive it, um, you, are, you, you offer worship to it every day. And, um, and like that, you build your feeling connection, your surrendering to Paramashiva through the initiation uh, of the Guru and um, worshipping the Guru and worshipping the Shiva. So we do, I, I pers we do two pujas, one is for the Guru and one is for the Linga. And actually, this linga is very, very, very special. Um, to give you an idea of how important it is, actually, I can make a video about that also. Um, maybe I'll, I'll just share a glimpse here. But um, I, I don't, we do not, we're not supposed to eat before offering puja to this linga. And I was contemplating on that. It's like, why is that? Why is Agama saying that we shouldn't have any food before that? And one of the clicks I had was that um, worshipping the Linga is basically an action which helps you to remember you as pure consciousness. Eating is an action which helps you to remember you as a body, because your body needs food to a certain extent, um, not your consciousness. So it is important to do puja before eating because it's important to put the priority on the experience of superconsciousness before the priority of the body. Swamiji was saying that you are the body also, but you're not only the body. So like that, we need to zoom out of this body and um, experience more freedom in an unclutched space um, towards this body and mind. So yes, and this, this Linga is very, very special because in the, in the Agamas, Shiva says that Guru cannot give you a second one. Um, if you lose it, you can take it from Guru, but Guru will not give it back to you. He can only give you one. So that's it shows how authentic and intense and how auspicious this whole thing is. So once you have it, you should cherish it like anything else. Like you really can't afford to be unaware and let it fall or let it hit something. And you have to constantly be aware of its existence and that you carry it because you're supposed to carry it uh, with you all the time. Like we have a certain pendant. Um, I'll give you a glimpse of the one I'm using now. So like that, you have a small bag, which is kind of cushiony. So if it hits the floor, it has kind of protection here. And, uh, and we carry it like that with us all the time. And it is literally the Atma. It is literally the, the, the bioenergy of Paramashiva. Uh, so when you constantly carry it with you, it helps you to, be, to raise your frequencies and to protect you from lower frequencies. And basically, lower frequencies won't be able to reach out to you uh, because of the vibration that this uh, linga has and it is the highest alchemy product as per agama that is what shiva also mentions paramashiva mentions in the agama and i wanted to tie this with um we do puja at the beginning of the day and then we engage with their day and that is very important because like i mentioned in the intro the fuel that you use to go into action is important if you fuel, if you move into action because of greed and fear, you will be strengthening that within you and you will be stuck in that. And that is basically the karmic cycle that we are stuck into, where the vicious circle, where uh, we run, we, are, we actually have um, deep resistance towards life because of some few very strong negative cognitions we carry about us and about life. And that is the foundation of our ego. And because of that, we, we cherish a lot of resistance towards engaging with life. 
But because of the greed and the fear, we engage fear of, for instance, you know, survival needs or taking care of, you know, basic survival stuff, I can say at the foundation of the fear. So because of that, because of fear of not having food, fear of not having sleep, fear of not having comfort, then like that, you will be moved towards acting or doing some things, working, engaging with life. And in the same way, if you have the greed, the greed of wanting, you know, something. So that greed, because you want to compensate for something else, the greed of, you know, I feel if I have this, I'll be more happy. If I have that, it'll be this. So this kind of constant greed is also uh, one of the, the major, it is the major fuel that we use to move ourselves into action. And we have to break this cycle because operating from fear and greed is not good. It only allows you to remain at low frequencies of existence and you cannot explore yourself as you are and you cannot definitely not experience the Paramashivoham experience and realize that you are uh, eternally blissful and always powerful. That experience cannot be experienced if you constantly operate from fear and greed. So Swamiji was saying there's three levels. When you operate from fear and greed, you create negative karmas, which means uh, a karma which will come back and just put you more down, more down, more down. It's a vicious circle which just uh, freezes you in the low frequencies of life. Then there is inactive. You don't have the fear and greed for whatever reason. In some situations it happens that your survival is taken care of and greed is not really there and you basically become inactive. So then you become inactive. And that is what Swamiji says, neutral karma. It is definitely not right, but at least it doesn't create more negative karma. Because every time we go into action, it gets stored in the muscle memory. So when you go into action from fear and greed, the fear and greed gets stored in the muscle memory. When you, when you don't go into action because you don't have fear nor greed, then there's no action. So the muscle memory does not get reinforced. It just kind of stays there and it has to get exhausted. But the real space to be in is to be active from the space of Paramashiva. And that is why doing puja at the beginning of the day is very important for us to reconnect to that and, and remember to operate from that space throughout the day. Constantly enriching, experiencing oneness with things around us, people around us, always wanting to contribute to people's lives. That is operating from Paramashiva space. And when you operate from Paramashiva space, you create good karma, which is a karma which will elevate you, elevate your frequencies until you establish yourself permanently in the space of Kailasa. And, um, and yeah, so that's what I wanted to share and really inviting you to contemplate um, in your day when you go into action, really looking in what is the fuel which is convincing me that I'm going into action now? Is it fear and greed? Are you not going into action because of just stagnation and just a laziness, boredom? Or are you going into action because of Paramashiva, to do Paramashiva's work? So that is why I felt that linking this to Puja was very important because Puja is a reminder. When you start the day, when you come back to a space of awareness out of the deep sleep, you remember you are Paramashiva, you remember to connect to Paramashiva, you remember that connecting to Paramashiva and being Paramashiva is oneness, is one and the same. And from there, you can engage with the world from the space of, okay, let me raise, let me enrich, let me contribute, let me bring more powerfulness or let me enrich people with um, powerful cognitions. And like that, life becomes better and better. And it's a, it's a, it's a kind of a, it's a flow, right? It's a circle. It's a virtuous or vicious. Um, if it is life negative cognition, if it is fear and greed, it is vicious. If it is enriching and contributing, it is virtuous. And like that, we can step out of this Maya matrix and um, experience the bliss that we truly are and experience oneness with the Guru and uh, Paramashivoham experience. So that's what I wanted to share in today's video. Um, thanking you again for watching and following this. If you have not subscribed and liked this video, please do. It helps a lot. And uh, you can put a comment below, what is your experience with your Atmalinga, if you do have one, or if you have one, if you have any questions, write the questions below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Nidhyanandam. I welcome you all with my love and respect. Let you all open all your three eyes. Ooh.